notice today on Coffee With, not only will you notice that we're at a different location, we're not the coffee shop today, but we're at Be Creative, which is just up the street on Washington at 1108 Washington. But we also have a new experience today. We're Skyping our guest in. Um, so we're going to be working out the little bugs as we go since it's a new experience for Chris and me. And our guest today, I'm very excited about it. It's Dr. Howard Hooper. The way that you and I kind of got started talking about this, um, you told me about, I think that's how we started, you told me about a young man that you met on the street that really is not and has not been at the center. And um, I, I was fascinated by this story and um, would like for you to kind of summarize that. You know, I posted that on our Blankies for Guatemala page, but a lot of people that would watch this haven't seen that Facebook page, so um, I'd like for you to tell that, you know, relate the information about this young man. This young man, whose name is Philip, and Philip we met about three years ago at a restaurant. One of the evenings, uh, the team goes out to eat at a local restaurant, and this young man who was selling um, handicrafts in the restaurant was there and so we we started a, a relationship with with philip come to find out philip was 15 well, come to find out philip was 11 years old when he started selling on the street he had left his village which was two hours away uh, when he was nine years old wanted to come in to get an education he realized how important education was but at nine years old he left his village he left his parents and came in to live with with some other family members and able to get an education well education is not free in guatemala as many people think it is but actually there is a, a cost involved. They actually have to buy their uniforms, they have to buy their books, and they have to have transportation each day back and forth from the school. Well, Philip found out very quickly that it was difficult uh, to get an education without any money. So at nine years old, he started working and, and selling handicrafts on the street. With well, the owner of the restaurant there in Antigua, Guatemala, uh, saw Philip one day and invited him in and started talking to him and heard his story and so she started allowing Philip to come in at 11 years old uh, to start selling his goods in the evenings in the restaurant and that's how we met Philip. Well, Philip uh, is a determined young man now he's 16 years old and has finished second grade uh, that doesn't sound no, very, very good, but actually that's quite an accomplishment for Philip, uh, not being able to read, not being able to write uh, when he started, and now he's at the second grade level and is so excited and determined. And in Guatemala, if you have a sixth grade education, then you're doing very well. So Philip's goal is to get a sixth, sixth grade education, to finish sixth grade, and um, uh, we believe that he will is determined enough and he will finish that education. And he is quite the businessman though. It's 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 kind of funny to talk to, to Philip and, and hear his story and he always talks about his business and, and how he does and, and what he sold that day and, and he actually makes jewelry himself and uh, he's able to sell that jewelry. He has beautiful scarves that he sells and some other handicrafts that are native to Guatemala. But uh, Philip is, is a determined young man and, and we are all pulling for Philip and know that he's going to do a, 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 what he's put out, has started out to do. He's going to finish his sixth grade education. It makes him a while, but he's going to finish. I don't even real. I can't even really come to the word, Howard, about how this just touched me in such a way to see someone that is so determined against so many odds and that he just keeps plugging away at it. I mean, most of us would look at that and go, he's finished two grades in, what, five years? And we would give up. And yet, he seem, it seems to motivate him. It's a joy to, to know Philip and to, to see him as he progresses um, each year uh, in his schooling. Well, and there's a group of us now that are praying for him that um, he will continue to have this drive to complete his education and that he will continue to be very determined because there there's a lot kind of stacked against him and you know we want him to make it we want him to do well and to see you know the ultimate goal of finishing the sixth grade 
So anyway, then you and I started kind of messaging back and forth and, um, you know, I quilt and sew and so I thought, well, gee, maybe we could send blankets down there, but I thought it was kind of a tropical climate and so why don't we start there. Why don't you give us a little geography lesson because I went and looked to see where Guatemala was and I realized I'd I was wrong about where I thought it was. So tell us where Guatemala is. Well, Guatemala is in Central America, right below Mexico. It's, it uh, is neighbor to Mexico to the north. But if you look at the map, um, Central America has a mountain race that, that runs all the way down from Mexico, all the way down actually to Colombia, all the way. And Guatemala City actually is in the mountains there, in that mountain range. Uh, as well as the Malnutrition Center. We're actually an hour from Guatemala City. San Juan Sacapepequis is the, the name of the, the city. Uh, but it is a, a, a cool climate, not tropical, which you would think, like most of Latin America is, but actually because it's in that range, it's at 5,000 feet elevation. And so it gets quite cool in the evenings. They actually call it the land of the eternal spring because it very rarely gets over 75 degrees during the day. And at night, it can get down into the lower 60s, upper 50s. Uh, and so it does get cold, especially for those babies. And as Robin mentioned that we were talking about blankets, uh, and uh, she told me that she is part of a quilting group. And I said, we would love to take quilts down. We have done some of that in the past, and it is such a blessing to those babies, to those children, to those families to have a blanket or a quilt to take home with them. Because most of them don't have the means to, to buy a blanket or have anything much more than a sheet, even if they have a sheet. So what a blessing it is that, that the quilting group has sent down blankets and a group has started specifically just to start, uh, just to send those blankets uh, to Guatemala to give to those babies. And it's just a beautiful ministry uh, that's going on right there in Vicksburg. Well, it is, and how it started is you said, yeah, that would be great. And, and I said, okay, you know, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, I can do this. And, and then I said, well, how many do you need? And, and you said, well, probably about 100. And I, so I thought, well, if I did nine a month, I could, I could do that in a year. And then my mom started helping me, and so that kind of picked up the pace a little bit. And then my friend Wanda started helping me, and then about... I guess maybe two or three weeks ago, one day Wanda said, I think we need to set up a Facebook page and see if some other people want to donate items because batting is kind of expensive and even some of the thread is a little bit expensive. And we were going to the thrift stores to buy sheets and, you know, fabric and stuff like that. But um, when you start thinking about making a hundred blankets, even if they're small, um, you know, it, it, it can get a little bit costly. And so we were just trying to be frugal and do what we could. And so at that point, I, I had already shipped you one box that I think was nine or ten of the little quilts. And, and I had another shipment that I was getting ready to send out, which was 13. And Wanda put this on Facebook, and a week later we shipped you, I believe we shipped you 35. No, we shipped you 27. Um, in one week, it was just so amazing. I spent almost every evening on the telephone, people calling me saying, hey, I want to give you this, or hey, I can, I can do this many quilts, or hey, I want to join this. It's been, and, and then in the process, I've gotten to hear all these amazing things. One of, this, one of the ladies that's sewing for us brought some, some quilts to me yesterday, and she has two grandchildren that were adopted from Guatemala. So it was a real special thing for her to be able to do this. And, and now we have a lady, a friend of mine in Michigan that's sewing with us. And there's even someone in Florida. I don't know where in Florida they are compared to where you are, but I think their Quilters Guild is going to start sewing for y'all. So you may end up with more than 100 blankets, Howard. That's great. <laughs> and you know, the nature of the center, Robin, is that because the children are going home, so there's always a turnover. So there's always going to be a need for blankets. When they go home is when they when they receive their blanket. And I shared this with Robin, but a cute story is that one of the families received a beautiful quilt. And when they went home, it was the nicest thing that they had ever received. So instead of using it 
as a quilt, they actually hung it on their wall because it was so beautiful and they, they felt it was just so precious. They wanted to hang it and display it. It's so, amazing, you know, really. Things that we take for granted, you know, are yes. 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 And uh, we are so blessed to live in America, and until you experience a third world country, you know, you don't realize it. You don't realize how blessed we are, that God has truly blessed our nation. Uh, and then you, you see some, something like, like this in Guatemala, and it really puts things in perspective. So we appreciate the, the willingness to, to work and to sow and to send, and uh, these are going to families that truly use them and need them. So oh, thank you. I see one of the blankets. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> Yeah, that's how we, we had a hard time getting everything in that last box. So we were we were being creative and we rolled those up and tied them up. So that's, That actually is great because when I, when I take them down, we take everything in with a suitcase, in a suitcase. So it, it gives us more room that we can bundle like that. So perfect. Why don't you talk briefly about some, I know that you just got back from Nicaragua and there's a completely different program that y'all have going on down there. Um, so tell us what you were doing in Nicaragua. Actually, each of our countries that we minister in, the eight different countries, are all different. Uh, Guatemala is the only place that has a malnutrition center. Uh, so in e each of the other countries, uh, it's totally different. I just re did return from Nicaragua last week and had a wonderful experience uh, as we work with street children in Nicaragua. As, as Robin mentioned earlier, the number of children that live on the street is just phenomenal. That's all over Latin America. And in Nicaragua, we work in a ministry uh, through a church that actually brings these st street children in once a week for a hot meal. Now, mind you, this is the only hot meal that they will receive all week long. And so as they come into the church to receive the hot meal, the wonderful thing is they're not only receiving physical food, but they're receiving spiritual food as well. So we're able to teach them and disciple them and share about Christ's love, God's love uh, with, with these children. There are 200 children in Nicaragua that the church ministers with. Uh, as we go with a team, we do a vacation Bible school. Uh, for the week, and so that means that week the children get four hot meals uh, rather than the one hot meal for the week. And uh, so that's a wonderful thing uh, there in Nicaragua. And again, you know, until you see that, until you understand, you won't understand uh, what life is like in a third world country. Now, Howard, if people are interested in m maybe going to the Malnutrition Center on Mission, do they need to organize that through their church and contact Orphan's Heart? What, what is the best way? I mean, can you plug individuals into other groups or if there are churches that want to travel down there? What is their um, best resource to get connected with you and with this program? Great. The, the best resource would be our website. And you can see our, our website at www.orphansheart.org. And so you can see all the trips that we have throughout the year. And actually, if you're interested in going a trip, you don't have to sign up with your church or with a group. Individuals can sign up for any of our trips. And so when you take a look at our website, you'll see that, that if, for instance, if you're in particular interested in going to Guatemala on June 17th, then all you have to do is sign up for that trip. doesn't matter if you're uh, one person or if you're 10 people. And now, I, we do have a, a group from Mississippi, uh, Indian Springs Baptist Church, actually, which is in Laurel, Mississippi. They traveled with us last year, and they're returning again this, this summer. In June, they'll be coming down again. So we're open to anybody. Uh, anybody who's interested, anybody who wants to serve, uh, you are welcome to join us. And all you have to do is find us on the website, and it will direct you to our different teams and our different locations, and it will prompt you on how to register or sign up for a trip. And you don't have to be Baptist. I know I, I have um, exchanged some emails with some other volunteers that you've had, and it's it's um, many denominations. It, you really don't have to be Baptist. You, you, I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. Yes, we are open to any right. anyone who can serve, any denomination, any person who's willing to serve. Okay, if people want to give, and we've had very generous people give very generously to our sewing program, they've just given everything that we could possibly use, and, and it, it's been great, but I suspect some people will 
um, watch this, they will go and look at your website and they want to give and there's actually a button on your website that says donate now. Um, we didn't do this video to try to get people to donate. I just uh, you know, I've been wanting to talk to you about this for a while and I figured this that I could convince you to Skype if, if we were going to record it, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. But if people do want to give, that's how they can they can do it. Now the other question I wanted to ask you, when your volunteers come down there, they, um, they're with you or one of the other, I don't know what your title is, coordinator or whatever, and do y'all make all the arrangements in terms of where they're going to stay and how they're going to get to and from the center and where they're going to eat? And Because that was the first thing I thought about. You've been trying to get me to come down there, I'm happy sewing, but there are some people that are going to want to come down there and help you. I'm going to get you down there. <laughs> But yes, that's, that's one of the, the um, nice things of, of Orphan's Heart, actually, is that we do everything for you. So if you've never been on a mission trip, you don't have to worry about anything. I actually tell people, all you have to do is sign up, pay up, and show up. We take care of all the rest. And literally, that's that's so true, because you sign up on the on the website, and from there on, we basically hold your hand, and we take you from the time we meet you in Miami at the airport, uh, we take you into Guatemala or Nicaragua, whichever trip you're on, there is always an Orphan's Heart staff person that travels, that is with you all the time, and we bring you back to the U.S. as well to help get through customs and integration. I know for, for a lot of people that's kind of scary, traveling in a foreign country and not speaking the language, uh, but Spanish is not necessary. Uh, on a, on a trip to Guatemala or to any of our other countries, you do not have to speak the language. Most people, of course, do not speak a second language. Uh, we always have interpreters and translators. Uh, but, you know, love is the same in any language. It doesn't matter. So if you're showing that love, you're loving on those babies. That's all that matters. Howard, is there anything I didn't ask you or we didn't go over that you want to be sure that people know about your program or about the work y'all are doing or about these sweet little children? I see such beautiful pictures and you've sent us some pictures that we've posted on our Facebook page. No, I just would like to mention the blog, though. We do have a blog yes. that you can see. Uh, if you go to our website, there's a button that says read our daily blog. Uh, and that way you will see uh, pictures of our, when our team is out, whether it's Guatemala, Nicaragua, Uganda, or Tanzania, wherever we are, we post a daily blog. So you get to read about what's going on, and you also get to see pictures of beautiful children wherever you are. So I encourage you to check that out. And you can actually see trips, previous trips. You can go back to the archives and see uh, different trips. And uh, and actually, you know, once you see those children, that's, that's all it's going to take to get you on the trip. I've read a lot of those blogs, and it does really pull at your heartstrings. It does. Howard, thank you so much for joining us today, and um, we'll keep sewing. I, I hope so. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Robin, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing some of you folks on, on our trip. Sounds good.